And our next speaker is Michael, Dr. Michael Bates, who probably doesn't need, need actually need an introduction. Um, but Michael grew up in Kentucky. He was the creator of Islamic Poems at the American Numismatic Society from 1970 to 2005. He received his PhD in 1975 from the University of Chicago. And he tells me that when he got his job at the ANS, he started learning about Islamic coins at their very beginning, the Arab Sasanian series, and he's still trying to understand them 25 years later. Well, uh, it's interesting, you know, to see that we started this little meeting with uh, uh, Sassanoid coins, um, with a long, long, long um, delayed, but nevertheless continuous um, uh, use of that type, and now we're concluding with more coins that are continuations of the Sasanic coins, although much closer to the uh, actual period of the coins themselves. And in fact, what I um, have been impelled into looking at this is to try to see what sort of continuity there is between the coinage of the Sasanian emperors themselves and the subsequent coinage in the second half of the seventh century under the Arabs. Um, did things just keep going along somehow or was there an interruption? And so the, the, the uh, results are ambiguous. I'll tell you that just to spoil the thing. You can all go off and have a drink if you want to uh, because uh, that's how it turned out. So, uh, and that is also why I have two, this is my original title, and uh, this is the second title, um, because it, 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 like many studies, it raises more questions than it answers. Uh, it's thrown together in some haste, and that's some old stuff mixed with new stuff. You all, I'm not going to explain about Arab Sasanian coins and their history, it's simply that the in Iran, the Sasanian emperors for four century issued coins like this one. And when the Arabs conquered Iran in, in 651, in the middle of the seventh century, they continued very similar coins before they invented coins distinctively unlike any others, distinctively Islamic. None of these coins are Islamic, although it is part of Islamic numismatics, but they're not Islamic, they're just not. They became Islamic. These, you could say, is a Muslim coin because, after all, it has a, a Muslim inscription. Uh, Arabic, actually, is the language. And uh, this is the empire uh, at its height, at its peak of uh, extension. All of the Western territories there were just held for a couple of decades. And, uh, and in fact, it, perhaps that expansion into the West in Anatolia, Syria, the Lada Sham, and Egypt really kind of brought about the, the uh, circumstances that led to the fall of the empire. Perhaps you could make that argument. At any rate, there's the Sasanian Empire. Uh, so the story then, where I pick it up, starts with the last Sasanian emperor who ruled for 20 years. Uh, after a period of instability and breakdown with one little, one short-lived king after another, uh, and, and um, caused, as a consequence, uh, have the Romans struck back, in other words, and I think that helped hasten the collapse of the empire. At any rate, here are his myths. And one of the things that I discovered in doing this that I had no idea about before is that all the myths are in the south. Now we have mints, if you look at the Sasanian mints over the dynasty, the Arab mints over the period that they extracted such coins, you have coins from all over Iran. But here, and you're going to see this today in everything we see, only from the south. Only from the south. Um, this is the coin of the last Sasanian emperor, and the point to look at is that in the margins of the coin, there is nothing to see. That's what that's the way one can instantly tell the original prototypes from the era of perpetuation. Uh, this table also led me into this uh, uh, morass. It started out as a much simpler table. It was prepared originally by Susan Tyler Smith, who is one of the world experts on, on uh, these Iranian coins, in a publication that came out 
last year, a few months ago, uh, her second publication after 22 years, which she brought up to date. And she had this table, which I have modified quite a lot, but the numbers are all hers. The, um, the uh, mints are listed across the top. Each coin has a two, two three, or four letter abbreviation for the mint. Most of them we understand. There are a few that are not. The ones up here are all, I believe, well, there's one that I still don't know, P.S. I've never heard of that one before, but uh, in any case, there it is. And you can see uh, from this, which is arranged first geographically from west, Iraq, and that's southeastern Iraq, uh, Maysan, close to the uh, waters of the Persian Gulf, all the way out to Sijistan, which is in the far, far east, and um, is just barely in modern Iran, so far east. The bars here, the double bars, are the point at which, according to the Arab histories, the various places were taken. Needless to say, they moved from west, from Arabia toward the east, and the very first uh, territory to be taken by the Arabs was Maysan in southeastern Iraq in the year, uh, well, I have all the eras here. It's such fun working with these coins. You have three different calendars uh, plus variations. And you have to keep them all in mind. The, the dates on the coins are RY dates. Year one, the first year of Khosrau. And that means that year, when the New York Day came, it was only three months later, but that was the first year, and then the second year starts, and so on down the line. Uh, so these are solar years, and we can go with it. Uh, the Hijra years, of course, are not solar years, they're short. So they may not, the numbers don't line up. And then, of course, we have to nail it all down to a, a, a constant, which is the common era dates. So the question is then, here we have nothing was minted until down here. That's what led me to this first. I got quite excited. Um, we have a few coins minted in this area, which is southwestern Iran. This is the conquest. There's a coin that was minted there. Then in Fars, the big province in southern Iran, uh, we have quite a few coins scattered out. Not a, not a consistent production, but Yazdegerd spent most of his life on the run. I mean, it was not really a, a stable uh, monarchy at the time, and that accounts for a lot of the spottiness of the minting. And these central territories in the south were conquered much later. We still have a couple of coins. And moving further east, you can see that suddenly there's a big... And then finally we get out to Sijistan at the far east. So we actually get, by arranging the mints geographically and not alphabetically, that's a swear word that I'm going to come back to at the end of my talk, we see things that we would not have seen. We see this bulge down here in this part of eastern Iran, what, 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 what are these higher numbers about? We don't know. But you also notice here, by this time, all of Iran itself has been taken by the Arabs. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean they moved in and immediately started the elementary schools in Arabic instead of Persian or what? No, nothing like that. We don't even know. We really don't know. In many cases, an Arab army showed up, give us money, we'll go away. Don't give us money and you'll be sorry. Okay, here's some money, go away. And they did. And the town continued with its life just as it had been before until the Arabs came back, of course, uh, next year or later. The crucial factor also in this historically is this fellow Abdullah ibn Amir. Um, this fellow Abdullah ibn Amir has a very important role in the coinage of early Islam. In fact, he's the guy who's responsible for it. He's the first one to mint coins. He was the first one to put his own name later after my talk, but he still put his name on the coins. So here's the question. These coins that have come after the conquest are those Sasanian coins. They look like Sasanian coins. <clears throat> they have the name of the king. They have his dates. We assume the dates and everything is correct. There's no Arabic on them, but they were minted theoretically, at least, under Arab control. So what are they? Sasanian coins or Islamic coins? 
Well, they're not Islamic because they're the wrong type. They, they have pictures on them. So they're not Islamic quite yet, even if the Muslims minted them. Are they Muslim coins? Well, I don't know. That's the question I'm trying to attack. So here are the coins then of this Yazdegir fellow. Here's his name. This is the mint abbreviation, which is BN, two letters, B below and N above it, and the date, which is the short word BIST 20, which is the date on all of the coins of this type. Well, all of it, I'm sorry, this is the last year of Yazdegir, and I wanted to show you what things were like at that point in time. Still mostly struck in, in this, entirely struck in the South. And then came the Arabs. Well, actually, they've been coming all along in here. And of course, it ended badly. I'm sorry that uh, mm -hmm. our friend Bob Schaff is not here, but uh, it's one of my favorite slides. <laughs> and uh, the caption is more or less correct. Now, when the Arabs took over, uh, they divided the country up into two governorates. One was based at Kufa. That was a military camp in the desert, a new city, a new foundation. The other was Basra. Both of these are big cities today, but they were just sandy places in the desert 1400 years ago. And everything that I've been talking about and will be talking about is taking place in this area. Why this area was in retard, I don't know. Later they began uh, shortly afterwards striking coins there too, but they were quite separate and unconnected encampments of Arab Muslims. So the only, there are a lot of coins dated 20. And a lot of people have suspected, including me, that a lot of those dates are fake. They just use that date because that was the last king. And that's what I think here. I am not going to talk about this coinage very much, but this is the most likely candidate. And it does have an Arabic word, although it's hard to recognize what it's supposed to be. But I don't believe that these coins were issued in the year 20. I'm just bringing them in here to, as a kind of interruption, an interlude. And I have all of these different varieties that belong to the same general category. They all are dated 20. And they are different combination. Yazdegerd, the name of the last emperor. Husserl uh, was the, um, the last important emperor, we'll come back to that a bit. Uh, but that was the name the Arabs used on their coins when they began striking the coins in earnest. So all of these, we don't, they were throw up your hands type issues. We can't do anything with them. So what came after, <laughs> what came after the Yazdur Gir coins? And I thought, when I started this out, that in fact I had evidence of continuity. But it turns out, I don't think so. Now that I've, as I learned in doing the uh, presentation, we just don't have any coins that are actually legitimately, we can say this coin has the date 20 and it was really struck in that year. We don't have such coins. We have the ones for Yazdegerd struck in his time, but we don't have anything Arab or Muslim after that, in that year. And we don't have anything in the year 21. So there's a, there's a year and a half with no coinage, at least a year and a half. Well, these are some ideas about why there wasn't any coinage. The mints didn't know what to do. The emperor's dead, the last emperor. This can't be true. We can't work under these conditions. We're out of here. Uh, insecurity, of the, the, the country was back and forth of fighting armies, north and south. And... Uh, even to move silver around to make coins with. Few of the cities, as I suggested earlier, really were run by Muslims or taken over by Muslims. Give us money, we'll go away. Don't give us money and you'll be sorry. That was the principle of government for those first few years. And the people who were left in charge after the death of Yazdegerd, Abdullah ibn Amir, were all busy out in the field, not back home in their capital cities, but out in the field chasing after the emperor, chasing after the remnants of the armies. These are just some ideas, but there were no coins. There was a gap. There was no continuity. 
why there were no coins of 21? Well, uh, this is only to say that um, we thought there were coins because you can see the word for three, and this is the word for one, and yeah, they look a lot alike. But they aren't, they aren't, they aren't. The, the word for one is uh, the letters are straight, the letters are curved, and the letter, this one is C, and this one is Yach. Familiar cognates, of course, Indo European. So then we come to an issue of coins that is absolutely Muslim. At least we know where we are. These coins all have Bismillah, and they come in various dates 22, 23, and 24. In other words, they're continuing the regnal year count of, of Yastikir. And this series goes on for four years, not longer, not shorter. Um, and they were minted here again in the southern tier and closer. Remember that Basra is right here, and the governor of Basra was the governor of all of this. And we're going to come back to him. So here I'm showing a coin of Yazdegir and a coin of the Muslims with Bismillah. And the idea is to point out two differences. You don't have to read Middle Persian, which is what this script and language are called, to see the differences, but you do have to look carefully. This one has the name of Yazdegir, and this one has the name of Hosro. Who? Hosro? Hosro was dead 20 years before. Why is he there? We'll come back to it. And then this one is the Arab coin. It has in Arabic, in the name of God, Bismillah. So that's the only real changes that were made. Now, getting back to it, that this change is not remarkable. Well, yeah, they probably did stop to think that we ought to put something on there about us and not just copy these older coins. But why did they change the name of the emperor? I don't think anybody's ever considered that, and I'm not sure what the answer is. It might be because the Arabs called all the emperors the Khosrows, just like we call the Roman emperors, and so did the Arabs. Caesars, the, the, the Caesars, however many there were, they called them all Khosrows. So maybe they thought that was, we, we don't like that guy anymore, but the generic name would be fine. Or perhaps he was the last strong and powerful. I don't know. It's, it's actually not explicable. Um, we can speculate all day. And so this is the end. Um, except that I should have had one more slide to show that after the four years of these coins with the Yazdegir dates, we finally got really Muslim coins that have the Hijra date for the first time. And that is when you will find this in Steve Album's book of 30, uh, 23 or 40 years ago, and as well as in my work, that that is when the Arab Sasanian coinage really starts. So the questions are all open. Was there continuity or was it not? Well, there was and there wasn't. There was a break. Uh, things changed, and we don't know why. And But that's where we ended up. So that's my talk, and uh, certainly I'm welcome to try to answer questions, although I've already tried to answer all the questions <laughs> I can think of <laughs> without success. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.